Japan is also the seaweed country. Many of the most succulent dishes in several Asian cuisines are made with one or more of the many varieties of algae cultivated off oriental shores. While they are not yet of great gastronomic interest in the West, algae have all the requirements of an excellent food source for the future. They are nutritious, easy to harvest, and very abundant. They alone could offset with enormous impact the food needs of practically any hungry human population. We aren't able to take full advantage of the ocean's tremendous possibilities because, to a large extent, we don't know how they work. The basis of marine life is phytoplankton, a kind of floating concentration of microscopic algae that is rich in protein and other nutrients and needs light to carry out photosynthesis. Phytoplankton is eaten by zooplankton, miniature crustaceans which are in turn the principal sustenance of small fish like sardines, mackerels and herrings, and also by large marine mammals such as whales. It's no coincidence that the greater part of all marine life is found in only 3% of the planet's water, the area where there is light. But what would happen if we managed to fill the other 97% of the oceans with nutrients? In 1988, the late John Martin of California posited that, since the lack of iron was the limiting factor regarding the growth of algae on the ocean surface, why not spread iron in the water and foment spectacular growth? In May of 1995, his experiment was carried out in the Pacific Ocean. Iron was put in the water, and lo and behold, the algae population bloomed like never before. So these are samples from our enrichment experiment. Um, initially, the sample was very low in phytoplankton and zooplankton. And then as we added iron and as time passed, we had a phytoplankton bloom. It's greener. And um, you can see that it, it was really uh, abundantly growing. Iron is required for many enzyme systems in, in plants in the ocean. Just as iron is required to carry blood or oxygen in our blood, iron is also required uh, for phytoplankton to take up nutrients and uh, to carry electrons to build uh, chlorophyll for their systems. Um, and only tiny amounts are needed. Um, our experiments indicate that when tiny amounts of iron are added to the oceans, uh, it, it does increase plant production. Sowing the seas with iron, increasing life, and as a consequence, obtaining more food. The world's seas and oceans currently produce some 150 million tons of phytoplankton. Another way of raising that figure would be to increase the amount of light reaching the water. Illuminating the subaquatic world with powerful reflectors to facilitate chlorophyll production in plants that live hidden away in the depths. Obtaining the means necessary to put an operation of this type into practice would not be all that complicated. Then again, it wouldn't be all that profitable either, at least not in the short term. But perhaps sometime in the future, around the middle of this promising 21st century, 
Maybe we will have managed to figure out a system to extract from the oceans the boundless potential of marine resources we surely will need. At the beginning of the 20th century, we lived on a planet of some 1.6 billion people. Today, there are over 6 billion of us. In the year 2050, there will be 10 billion. We'll have to consume some 500 million kilos of protein every day. Half of that will be animal protein. The rest will come from plants. By then, it is thought, we will have more than sufficient means to adequately feed the world's entire population. We will have developed numerous varieties of genetically modified products available to one and all. We will be duly served by efficient procedures designed to control these products, both medical and environmental in nature. We will have food that, besides satisfying our nutritional needs, will also provide us with specific personalized elements that will assuage individual health concerns. We will have land-based farms for raising animals that will offer us tasty, healthy products. From the seas and oceans, we will reap a boundless quantity of protein. Enormous floating marine ranches, protected by invisible security systems based, perhaps, on ultrasound. Arthur C. Clarke, the celebrated and visionary science fiction writer, once said that the herds of future aqua ranches would probably be made up of whales. Naturally, he said this based on solid reasoning. Whales are extremely useful animals. Their meat is just as tasty, or arguably even more so, than any conventional land animals. And since they're mammals, reproduction would be much less complicated than with the species tended currently. Raising whales would allow us to bypass several steps in the fish breeding chain, for baby whales feed on zooplankton right from birth. As with cattle, the commercial farming of whales would also be a definitive way of avoiding their extinction. As fate would have it, we might never be as close to the sea as in coming decades. Expectations are only as great as the imagination permits. It wouldn't be unrealistic even to expect humans to colonize the oceans. In fact, underwater cities, floating communities like those imagined by Jules Verne, are not that outlandish an idea. The sea is a world we have yet to rationally exploit. Is humanity about to close a circle? We are certainly on the verge of returning to where our amphibian ancestors once lived long ago. As with all of life's fabric, the future of food will also be woven with threads from the past. Recent food crises have hit hard. They won't be forgotten easily. That's why we won't ever stop trying to develop means for better, safer food for everyone.
Humanity's many abilities put new techniques and possibilities at our fingertips. Taking advantage of them for the good of our species before we reach the physical limits of our planet is unquestionably one more crucially important test.